Let's move on now to the personal relationships and charisma. And uh, let's have Ted talk about uh, his relationship with Bob Noyce, who, through a surprise phone call, hired him as employee number 12 at Intel. Tell us about <coughs> well, a couple at of Intel, who's called Superman. I, I, had, I was a postdoc at Stanford working on some government-sponsored research. And um, one of the professors there was a consultant for Fairchild. And apparently, Bob approached this professor and said, do you have anybody that you know who's there in the group that would fit this requirement? He describes what he's looking for. And I was one of the names that came up. And some of the others were at Fairchild. And they'd already taken enough people from Fairchild. So, so I think that's why I, that's why I won. <laughs> but, a couple of things. There used to be a fellow from Fairchild who would come around to talk to us about you know, some of the students who might be getting ready to uh, you know, get their PhD and be looking for a job. And um, I used to like to talk to this fellow to find out what was going on in the semiconductor industry. And um, I had also done some work with core memory, so that was an area of interest. So, I'm invited to come to Bob Noyce's home to interview for the possible position. And one of the things he asked me, and now I don't know what Intel's about. In fact, I think I asked him, do we really need another semiconductor company? <laughs> but anyway, he said, what did I think the next big step for semiconductors would be? And based on some of these conversations and my interest in memory, I said, memory. And I didn't know it, but he and Gordon had decided that's what they were going to do. So boy, was that a lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Bob was a very, he tended to look out a long, long distance. And in fact, he used to compare, he used to say, one of the biggest steps in the Industrial Revolution was the development of the fractional horsepower motor, mm -hmm. when you could take and get the kind of mechanical power that you needed just the right amount and in the right place. And he said, the microprocessor is the fractional horsepower computer. And when did he say that? What year was that? He said it about the time we were starting to come out with 71, the 71? 70, 71? Oh, way back. Probably, probably in the he was saying that long, long before I right? Yeah. But another, another person who I think you have to give an awful lot of credit at Intel for is Andy Grove. And Andy kept everything under very tight control. <coughs> and uh, later experience showed me how important that might be. But to give an idea, at one point, um, the microprocessor sales where major, a major portion was through distribution. And Andy started almost reading the riot act to the marketing people saying, we do not have enough visibility from the distributors as to what the sales out are. And I don't think I appreciated or understood what he was worried about. But you see, later, another experience, I find a company that they think they've got great sales. They're shipping tons of stuff to distributors, but it's sitting there on the distributor's shelf. And that's what Andy wanted to avoid. So where others would say, well, it's through distribution. There's not much you can do. Andy wouldn't take that for an answer. He said, we've got to find a way to solve that problem. And another thing that he did, as the company grew, he was worried about be it being uh, becoming disorganized. He put in what was called management by objective and it was a real learning experience for a lot of us engineers because part of the process would be you do a progress report every month but part of it you predict what you're going to accomplish in this in the coming month and then part of your progress report is you compare what you actually did with what you predicted you were going to do. And in fact, like one of the examples is, you know, the engineer says, well, I'll have this project completed in three months. A month later, he's still saying it's three months. And 
Andy would point out, that means you made zero progress in a month, and at the rate you're going, it's going to take an infinite amount of time. <laughs> so, so he was, he put in a lot of discipline that I think really helped Intel be successful in its product development and, and keep people focused on getting the right job done.